Hey there folks, my name is Luke and for this episode I am going over my Colorado backpacking gear loadout. So you guys have seen the adventures and I've had many questions about the gear, so here you go. All right, so this is the exact loadout that I carried on that trip, all of the gear. Now, with one exception, as you can see here, I have my tent on the outside of the pack and I didn't hike the entire time like this. My wife was carrying the tent for a while. I was carrying the bear canister and basically she started suffering from elevation sickness. So I took a bunch of her weight, including the tent. That's a great place to carry it too. Not bad at all. As long as your tent is very lightweight like this one here. Now, as I'm going over all of this gear, I will tell you guys why I brought it, why I chose to use it. So you guys can take that information, maybe plan your own trip, your own adventure. So let's just go ahead and start with the pack. This is from Z-Pax. This is the Arc Blast. It is a Cuban fiber material. It's extremely lightweight. It's very strong. It has an external carbon fiber frame. It's incredibly comfortable. I had this pack especially made for me so it matches all of my dimensions, everything that I need, so it fits like a glove. It's incredibly comfortable, even with a heavy loadout, which you saw in that adventure. When I took all the weight from Susan's pack, this pack was close to, I don't know, 45 pounds, something like that, and it carried it with ease. Now, if you're interested in this pack, I do have videos on it, so check the channel. Now, before I forget, I did add this pouch here. This is from Z-Packs as well. And basically, I kept my phone inside of this uh, with a battery bank so I can keep it charged. I had my paper map, and I also had my compass inside of this. Before we go any further, let's talk about water. For this trip, I carried a water bottle just like this one. I've actually thrown it away since then. Uh, this is a one liter water bottle, started with it being full. I also had this bottle right here. It's a little bit less than one liter, I believe. I don't remember exactly how much it carries, but enough, right? This is a filtered water bottle from Hydro Blue. And essentially, it can filter thousands upon thousands of liters of water. So as I'm hiking along, I drink all the water in this bottle, then I drink the water in this one, and the next time I came up to a water source, I would fill this up and just continuously replenish this bottle. It was a very good system. It worked very well for our needs because there was running water everywhere because of the incredible snow melt. It was awesome. That is a really good, easy system. Because there was so much water, we didn't need to carry like large size hydration bladders, nothing like that. So we also saved some weight as well. Now, when I say we, I'm talking about Susan and I. We both carried the same sort of setup. So let's just go here. I did carry this tent for a while, about half the trip when Susan started feeling bad. This is from Big Agnes, and this is the Slater two-person tent. This is a three-plus season tent. It's double-walled, so it definitely kept us warmer. I cannot emphasize just how much I like this tent. I mean, it's a great tent. It's ultra light. It keeps you warm. And at nighttime, when it got down below freezing there in Colorado, it definitely kept us warm. Did a great job of blocking out the breeze too. So yeah, there you go. Uh, very lightweight. I do have a video on this, multiple videos. So if you're interested, check those videos out. For my trip, I did have my hat. I had my sunglasses, right? The hat is from Sealskin. And to be honest, this hat was just okay. I really did need a larger size hat for Colorado, right? The sun out there, especially at the elevation that we were at, <sighs> intense, right? So this does block the sun somewhat. My glasses here, they're actually safety glasses from DeWalt, but they rock. Full coverage, nothing gets in, no light at all, perfect. So this is my setup right here. I'd hike around like this. It did a good job of blocking out the sun, but not great. You really need a wide brim, right? So with that being the case, I'd wear my hat. I'd wear my sunglasses. And boys, girls, I would cover myself in sunblock. We actually had two different types of sunblock. This is for the face, the ears, the neck, all that stuff. And we had some aerosol kind that we would spray on our arms and legs. I cannot stress how important this is. Also, you do need chapstick, which has built-in sunblock. You do not want to have your lips sunburned. I know that sounds crazy, but folks, I've had it happen to me one time. 
and it's pure hell. It is just about the worst effing experience in the entire world. It's that bad. You do not want it. So cover yourself in sunblock because you're so high up, the sun's more intense. Put chapstick that has SPF in it. You need it, right? Also, here's a little tip for you. If you're hiking on snow fields like Susan and I were, cover your neck. The sun reflecting can just burn you up. Also, if you're going to be spending a lot of time on a snow field, do your eyes right here. I know that sounds strange, but the sun will toast you in very strange ways. So make sure to really slather it on. About every 90 minutes, reapply or you will be sorry. I promise you. I had some bubble wrap, very lightweight. This is a seating pad, pack cover. I got this off Amazon for like $8, something like that years ago. Um, I cannot remember the name of the company. Orange Sport is what comes to mind. I might be wrong, might be right. Not sure. Just check on Amazon, you'll find it very cheap. Just do a search for uh, pack cover, you'll find it. Bug spray. This stuff right here works very, very well. It also is very effective against ticks. Now, we went early in the season, right? And this stuff worked just fine. The mosquitoes were just beginning to come out. And as the season goes on, they become much, much worse. Compared to the mosquitoes that we have here in the east, man, night and day difference. Those things out there in the west are mean. And if you're going late into the summer, midsummer, something like that, I highly recommend that you get some bug spray that has DEET in it. They don't like DEET. This stuff, they, eh, they kind of mess with you, kind of not. But DEET will keep them away. If you don't have any DEET, you might be sorry. So now let's go to the inside of the backpack. As you can see here, this is a roll top. And basically the entire top portion of my pack was filled <laughs> with a gigantic bear canister. And let me just go ahead and talk about that real quick. Um, I do not own a bear canister because I live in a forested area, right? Uh, there's no portion of the mountains here that I live in that's above the tree line. So we always have trees. I can use bear bags and so on. But out west, you're oftentimes above the tree line. So bear bags don't make sense. And you are oftentimes required to carry bear canisters. I don't own one, but I was able to rent one out in Outfitters. Uh, it was like $6 a night, so super cheap, awkward, they're huge, they're heavy, but they are essential. There was a story from Colorado not long ago of a 19 year old waking up in his campsite to a crunching sound. What that was was the kid's head inside of a black bear's mouth. So yeah. Next up is the Tokes 750 milliliters pot. This has a bale handle with it. And this is for boiling large amounts of water if we needed to. Kit bags. Now you guys have seen these many, many times. Uh, these typically do not change very much. For me, I carry these when I'm out day hiking. I carry these when I go backpacking. I will show you what's inside of these bags. MSR gas canister for my stove. The stove is the MSR Pocket Rocket 2, and I have an extra lighter in there. This is the MSR Titanium Cup Mug, perfect size for coffee. I also have an additional Titanium Mug. This one's from Mountain Laurel Designs, and a review is coming up on this soon. This is uh, just as light as this one, and it's less expensive. I have some Trioxane, just in case we had to get a fire going. Always have a good backup. Tin foil for a lid as a windscreen ferro rod always carry a ferro rod with you so you can get a fire going no matter what right even if this gets wet it will work i also have an extra lighter so that is my fire kit keep on going here what i have is the big agnes insulated air core sleeping pad this is a great sleeping pad i would have used the thermarest x therm but Susie stole it. She loves that sleeping pad. So <laughs> that's what she was carrying. This is what I was carrying. This is insulated. I don't remember the R value, but it's a good pad. This offers you a ton of cushion from the ground, which you may need if you're camping in a rocky environment, such as the Rockies. Rocky? Eh, whatever. Anyway, uh, yeah, we definitely camped out on some rocks, so this was appreciated. This is my power kit. And inside of this kit, I have a headlamp, which also operates as a flashlight. This is from Olight. And this is a flashlight headlamp, which I've been rocking for a while now. This is the H2R Nova. It's incredible. It is 
absolutely awesome. A review is coming up soon. Extra battery for the headlamp. Just in case we had to hike out at nighttime, if someone got sick, something like that, we needed to have lots of power. Charging cable for my cell phone. Battery bank for my cell phone. This is from Anchor. This is the PowerCore 10,000. Okay, the next bag is my miscellaneous kit. So here's my chapstick with the sunblock in it. Essential, absolutely essential. First aid kit. I have sinus pills in here, stuff for a headache, ibuprofen. Speaking of which, if you are suffering from elevation sickness, here are some tips for you. Take ibuprofen, drink lots of water, eat carbs, get some rest. You will feel better. I have two titanium spoons. Uh, this is a Tox titanium spoon here, and this is a Stotic. I think that's how you say that, titanium spoon. These are long handle, as you can see, perfect for eating Mountain House, since Mountain House has such tall lids. Here is a towel, just in case we get wet, our gear gets wet, we can dry it off, camera, so on. I have some antibacterial moist wipes for cleaning up. Here I have some Gold Bond uh, body powder, and this is for chafing. Now, if you suffer from chafing under the arms, your ass, whatever, this stuff really does work well. It's a little bit awkward to put on, but um, yeah, it's essential. You can buy these little travel size and they're fantastic for hiking. Toothbrush, toothpaste in this pack. I have some water treatment tablets, right? As a backup, I have some wet wipes. I even have some hand warmers, just in case. Here's what's left of our toilet paper. And I brought this entire spool of line. This is from Atman Rope Manufacturing. This is made in, in the United States. This is what they call micro cord. And this stuff is very, very strong. It's great for repairs, just about anything that you can use cord for, you need cord for, this stuff rocks. And this is 125 feet right here. And I can keep this inside of my bag. Very, very good stuff. I will have a video on that coming up soon. So all of that makes up my miscellaneous kit. Of course, with the spoons, after we ate with those, those would go in the bear canister. If you are going out for say like an overnight trip, you're not carrying all that much food and you have one of the bigger size bear canisters, put your kit bags inside of the bear canister. It will take up less space inside of your pack. Now, when it comes to these kit bags, these are from Kafaru and they really do work well. They're a little bit pricey, but the quality is excellent. You're not gonna tear these up. And with these kit bags, it does add a level of water resistance to your gear. Going on, I have a plastic footprint here for our tent, which we needed. We camped out on top of rocks, stones, all sorts of stuff up at the lake there at Cathedral Lake. And this was definitely needed. Good protection for your tent. Right here, I have my clothing bag. And inside of this, I have my rain gear. I have a puffy down jacket. I have numerous sweaters and a change of shirt and socks and underwear. And essentially all my clothing fits inside of this. This is very important, especially if you're hiking at high elevations because the temperatures, the conditions can change literally like that. One second, it's 80 degrees and you're frying. The next second, it's freezing cold and you need your down jacket or it's the most impressive hailstorm you have ever seen, right? Conditions change very quickly up there. Okay, this is the last part right here, and this is the Katabatic Gear Elsic quilt. Good down to 22 degrees. When Susan and I were camping in the early summer there at Cathedral Lake, I am so glad that I brought this with me because it got cold. It got down below freezing, even in the summer up there. So yeah, make sure to bring a really good sleeping bag quilt that goes a little bit lower than you would expect, right? Because those temperatures can swing greatly. You know, it's funny. I mean, it would be below freezing in the morning. And as soon as the sun popped up, it got hot as hell, just like that. So folks, there you go. That's all of the gear that I brought with me on this trip. Of course, Susan had her own loadout. Uh, she originally was carrying the tent. She had a clothing bag, a uh, sleeping pad, all that good stuff, right? Her miscellaneous kit, fire kit, and... Uh, power kit and so on. By the way, folks, I want to talk about how I got this gear out to Colorado for that trip. Now, there's two different things that you can do when you're going backpacking and you have to fly. You can, of course, check your baggage and face the risk of having it lost, right, or delayed, or you can ship it to yourself. And that's exactly what Susan and I did. 
Uh, basically, we just went to like a shipping center. We threw it in a box with everything else that we wanted to ship to ourselves and we sent it to the hotel that we were staying at. Make sure to contact them before you do this. Make sure that it's cool because they may not be okay with that. You might have to sh send it to another shipping center and that's fine. There's plenty of those. They're everywhere. So yeah, I mean, it costs like a hundred bucks to ship a package that was roughly 50 pounds with all of my gear, her gear, everything that we needed for a full week of work and play. So yeah, that's the, that's the way that we went. And of course, after our trip was over, we were done filming. We put it all in a box and sent it back to ourselves. You know, you may think that sounds really expensive because it costs $200 to ship that to and back to ourselves. But, you know, with that trip there, it would have been completely ruined if we arrived in Colorado and our bags had been lost. All of this gear, it's very expensive. You wouldn't want to replace it. If your pack was lost, your trip is in jeopardy of being ruined. So we didn't want to take any chances, especially when it comes to filming these adventures for you all. So folks, there you have it. That is the gear that I used in Colorado, hiking around in the Rockies, camping out at Cathedral Lake, hiking across snowfields. What an amazing adventure. All of this gear performed exactly as it should, and it was all selected for a reason. Of course, if you have any questions, you know what to do. Until next time, everyone, strength and honor, be well. Be well.